Do you have questionable judgment? Sorry? Like, your judgment, is it questionable? Am I in trouble? Come with me. Sorry about that, I kind of lost it a bit. Um, wh what's your name? Odette. Oh, nice, nice. Cool, cool. Um, well, I was working on writing this song and I'd love some feedback. Um, I'm more of like a singer, but I kind of wanted to break out, you know? So, can I, can I play it for you? Yeah. future, all songs will be created by robots, and they'll all be perfect. You thought it was shit. I thought it was human. I want my gears to turn like that robot. That takes the fun out of it, though. Hey, but maybe that the both of us, we and become mechanical. You can play piano? No. Push that down. And play those chords that you were playing again. It was a good tune. Oh, you know me. <laughs> yeah. Come over here for a second. I'm going to say something I probably shouldn't. Uh, oh, okay. You are a fantastic songwriter. Thanks. And I want you to perform in the student showcase. Really? Yes. Really? Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Is this really happening? Okay, so that's a yes. Oh my god. And you'll write your own song. Uh-huh. The song you put on this tape will be the song that you perform at the showcase. Do I have to sing? Yes. Your own lyrics as well. You have two weeks. Make it you. Any over there? No. You? No. Nah. 
How about now? No dice. How will I know when I find it? You'll know when you see it. Just keep looking. Congratulations on the showcase, by the way. It's a big deal. Thanks. I mean, there will be other artists, too. It won't just be me. But there will be a big crowd, I'm sure. Good. More ears to hear your music. Should I cut myself open? For them? Yeah, like, <laughs> splatter my insides on a canvas, absolutely obliterate myself. If they're worthy. Hey! I think I found it! That could be, that could be the muse. I could be your muse. I can help you write it, I mean. Really? Yeah! But you know, help you get out there. Well, let's keep looking. Actually, still up in the air. But no, actually. I like watching people, mimicking them, passions and mannerisms and stuff like that. Oh, so you're an actress. That's not what I am. Just watch and copy. Bring a little me, but more of you. Why not just be you? <laughs> Being you is being someone else. We're defined by our environment. <laughs> oh my god, shut the fuck up. <laughs> you will get what I mean one day. Uh-huh. Sounds like you'd be a good songwriter. Have you ever actually written lyrics before? <laughs> I mean, not good ones. I like using other people's words. Good to know. <sighs> you know, you're a hard one to figure out, Odette. Mm. There's not much to figure out. I'm what you see. Nothing more and nothing less. I don't think that's true. There's something going on in there that I can't see. You're kind of blurry to most people. This isn't inspiring me. It inspires me. Well, you have more imagination than I do. Hello, my dear. <laughs> my dear? We're inspiring. <laughs> um, hi, honey. How was work? Oh, it was a grind, but I'm happy to be home now. Oh, what happened? Tom jammed the printer, and Greg jammed the other printer. I'm so sorry to hear that. <sighs> well, I decided to make you this delicious soup instead. You did? 
did. It smells delicious. I call it my song soup. I made it just for you. You know, my dear, you look especially beautiful today. And you look rather handsome. Don't you think I'm pretty though? Pretty? Yeah. Don't you think I am? Yeah. I think you're pretty too. Close your eyes. Why? I'm gonna show you something. Listen for a sound. Too. I never said you couldn't be. 
You know what? I don't need you. Without me, you would have nothing. No song, no lyrics. That first song that you played me was fucking awful. You cannot write for shit without me. I'm not just your muse. I'm everything. Everything. Fuck you. Through the canvas I see Right in To something I Don't understand There's something I Don't understand You're a little foggy and I know it I trust you as far as I can throw it Just a joke But your hands My bones These notes, these chords My home So ladies and gentlemen, this next act is a special one. He is the youngest comic to be up on this stage and get more than just a polite laugh. Remember Remy, ease them in, make the turn, and stick them in the heart with the landing. Pardon? Respectfully, I love you and I appreciate the help, but I want to stab you in the throat so fucking bad right now. I'm sorry. Thank you. Perhaps for the wrong reasons, but you'll just have to see that for yourself. Without further ado, here's Remy Rose. Yeah, you're too kind. Thank you, mister, and uh, thank you all for coming out. Um, when I was a kid, I was always kicking rocks. If I saw one while I was on my way home, I'd kick it for miles. One day, my neighbor lady Brenda saw me doing this, and. She noticed it was a bit of a habit of mine, so she told me, if you keep kicking those rocks one day, they're gonna kick you back. You know what I said to her? Nothing. I didn't say a damn thing, though, later that night, I did set rocks outside her door so when she went to go get the mail the next morning, we could see if her theory was correct. <laughs> um, so, the next morning, Brenda goes out to get her mail, I'm watching from my window. She takes a step out, slips, falls, lands straight on her old lady face. She did lose a few teeth and break her rib while that happened, but I learned a valuable lesson that day. Rocks do indeed kick back. I mean, they kick that old hag halfway to hell if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> um, 
Tucker out here tonight, huh? It's not a problem. Uh, knock, knock. Who's there? Not Brenda. That sweet woman never made it home from the hospital. by hand. Why is that? Well, with a typewriter, I feel like with a copy of a copy of a copy, the rhythm and the feeling of the author's original intent is lost. I just keep my honest and personal. Well, thank you for sitting down with us today, Agnes. I'm really excited to hear about your next project. That we are. You really are an incredible writer. Yeah, one of the best young authors I've ever read. I think you are the best young author nowadays. We love you, Agnes. Everybody does. comes back home to their supposed grieving father, says, it was just a prosthetic this whole time. I'm not really dead. You can imagine how well that went over. He went upstairs and grabbed his old Remington and started like pointing it at us. And went, <laughs> no, 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 Do you want to be a fucking loser local comedian or a goddamn Vegas star, you rat face little shit? Hey, remember the golden rule, you little snot nosed brat? Fuck off! And what are you gonna do? Chop off a prosthetic copy of my head? Hey, don't push me. I'll shove this burning cigarette so far up your nose it'll reach your frontal lobe. <gasps> really? I'll dig for gold while I'm up there too. Oh, Fuck. seriously? And chase me around with it? Ooh, scary. I don't care. I'm writing a book and I want to interview you. Wait, really? Yeah. Like, really? Mm hmm. Okay.
told the joke about the prank on your dad's dad. Yeah, what did they think? I got kicked off the stage. Tell it to me like you told it to them. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming out tonight. I love the attention. Now, what if your child was brutally murdered right in front of you? How would you react? Well, I put that question to the test earlier this month, and let's just say the results were rather shocking. Stop. I can do it better. Hi, I'm Remy, and I'm a dumb bitch. And if someone doesn't give me attention right now, I'll cry my little baby eyes out on stage. No, 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 fuck you. Get off the stage. You're not funny. Shh, shh. Ah! Tell a joke. How do you keep a bagel in jail? You put locks on it. I don't get it. You wouldn't. Okay, my turn. What's black, white, and red all over? What? A penguin in a blender. A new book by Agnes Dubois, the king of tragedy. A novella about the exploitative comedy of lowlife Remy Rufus. A story about a man trapped behind the confines of his own routine, featuring intimate details about the life of Agnes Dubois and a strand of her hair with each copy about a man in conflict with himself and his environment, gasping for air in a field that he struggles to stay afloat in. And a vial of Agnes Dubois spit will be included with the purchase of every two copies, all hand typed, of course. Plead the fifth. Funny. It's it's my civic duty. Is that better? Do you tell lies in your routine? Yeah, I've I've been known to stretch the truth. How far? Depends. When's your next show? Tomorrow, actually, I was invited to perform at an artist showcase. Oh, so you consider yourself like an artist? Do you think what you do is art? <laughs> I don't really like to put labels on what I do, and I also don't really like your patronizing tone. What's your talent, Remy? My talent? Telling people exactly what they think they don't want to hear, but they do. They love me even when they hate me, and they'll never get rid of me because I don't quit. I ramp it up each time I go out because I'll always have an audience. Time after time, there's a line down the block just waiting to hear what I have to say. Oh, that might be the saddest thing I've ever heard. And how far are you willing to go to just get the slightest bit of attention? I can go much further. You can't even fucking imagine. You're gonna make me lose my lunch, mainly due to your poor speeches and also your bad breath. But you love to hear what I have to say, don't you? That's why you're writing this fucking book about me. You are no different than my audience. You are interested in the exact same thing they are. No, you silly little boy. I am very different from them, at least, I can see straight through your putrid little act. You rely on shock value and gross out jokes, and there's just no substance to you or your humor. You're like a little rat begging for food on a train. You feast on garbage, but why? Is it because you think that that's all you're gonna get? I swear, if you would put at least two seconds of thought into your jokes, then maybe you would get an ounce of credit. But yeah, no, you're just weird and exploitative and just pathetic. But you'll still exploit me, won't you? You'll point out all my flaws and tell me I'm pathetic and then use it for your book. That's what you'll do, won't you? God, you think you are so much better than me, but really, we're not that different after all. God, you are, you are so out of touch with real people, I think you forget that not everybody has these amazing standards you do. 
I am not causing any harm to anybody. I'm just helping people relieve these violent thoughts that we all have. Just, you know, in a, in a healthy way. On the contrary, you fucking freak. Not everybody in the world thinks the way you do. And the ones that do are locked up in foreign prisons. And yeah, I will have no problem exploiting you just as you've done to other people. You know, you have such a fragile little boy heart and it's just so wickedly sad. You think everybody loves you, but they only come to see you fail. <laughs> you know, that's what this book does, buddy. It looks down upon you just as those people do. You hide behind this character that you've created, but it is so obvious that he is just as fucked up as you are. And don't compare yourself to me, you snot those little brat. I'm a fucking genius. When I was a boy, my father and his buddies used to try to teach me how to shoot. They would take me out in the backyard, set up all the bottles, let me go at it. I hated everything about it. The noise, the weight, the flash. I felt like I had no control over anything. So one day, my dad brings me out into the backyard, business as usual. I guess while they were setting up all of the bottles, the safety got unlocked. I really didn't mean to do what I did, but it happened just like this. Remy is a man who thinks and speaks, but fails to consider what one would call a sincere disaster artist. One that can build just as easily as he can destroy. Despite my disdain for his character, I find some of his qualities rather admirable. His presence makes you feel small, and his words make you feel anger, and his actions just make you feel pity. The thing is, most people fail to make you feel anything at all. Remy captures as I guys few can tangibly grasp, including myself. One question seems to remain unanswered though, a question I'm not sure even he has the answer to. Who's really in control? Us? Or him?
I'd like to audition. Um, sorry, we're not taking any more auditions today. But it said that auditions weren't over for like 40 more minutes. <clears throat> um, we're actually super busy in here, so just scoot off, please. Doesn't sound like it. Well, no one had the passion, no one had the energy that I, that I needed. No one did it. Well, actually nobody auditioned, but it seems even if they did, they wouldn't have matched the energy and passion that I needed anyways. Maybe I'm just too picky, but I should be able to have standards. Do you feel it? Do you get me?
like you around here at this time you don't think I'm cool enough no no it's not that it's just like this is mostly relegated to writers writing on napkins and unpleasant old men <laughs> am I supposed to guess what group you fit into oh no I won't make you I guess I'm neither right now well don't try to sell your manuscripts to me tonight I'm not in the mood to be pandered to oh I'm not that kind of writer I'm glad do you listen to the Beatles? My dad does. I do too. Sometimes. Okay, so you know them. Hopefully it's not. Yeah, I suppose so. Do you ever listen? Do you ever think about why we still listen to them? Like everyone knows the lyrics to "Here Comes the Sun," which was a deep cut in 1969. Well, yeah, they're the Beatles. Exactly. They're the Beatles. Like we've all seen these grown-ass men's feet on the cover of Abbey Road. And when we close our eyes, we can picture John Lennon's features exactly. His round glasses, his flowy hair, he's probably wearing a suit. His bushy eyebrows. Right, his bushy eyebrows, you get it. I do, but what's your point here? Okay, my point is like, there hasn't been the Beatles since the Beatles, and I don't think there'll ever be the Beatles again. Like, lightning never strikes twice in the same place, you know, and why should it? Sure, but something new could come around and be like a billion times bigger. And we could be totally blindsided like we were back then. What makes you say that? Well, we've never had a book in the 20th century reach that level of wide known success. Except maybe Catcher in the Rye. But that gets into complicated territory as you can imagine. Right, right. Right. But something or something like that, that has the potential to rival the influence of what they haven't seen yet. Seems like you think a lot more than you let on. You've just got to be careful with who you share your thoughts with. Some people take them and run with them. Yeah, I got really close with this girl and I wrote a song about her. I'm actually performing it tomorrow. Um, she got really out of joints about it. <laughs> just not an expression. <laughs> um, but yeah, she told me that the only reason I'd ever done anything good or special in songwriting was because of her. Really hurt me. I don't know, it felt like I finally did something good and then she was taking all the credit for it. You know, maybe I was overreacting. I don't know, whatever. She's off to be a dancer now. I haven't seen her since. Wow. I'm sorry, um, Quincy. Quincy, Camille. I seem to have the, like, opposite problem. Well, maybe that's for the best. Maybe, but, I mean, people care about your stuff. At least someone wanted to take credit for your song. I couldn't pay people to care about what I do. What do you do? I dance. Dance? People love dance. Yeah, but it's like I have to justify my own validity when performing. Like, at an event or some showcase, it's the song that is accompanied by the background dancers. We're just like an afterthought or a niche. But you still see dance everywhere nonetheless. It's not like people don't like it. I'm not sure you're picking up what I'm putting down. I want to make dance part of the regular things. Like you'd go see a film with your friends and then you stop and see a dance show. Or you watch a movie about dance. Or you have some fancy lobster dinner with your grandparents and you go stop and see the dance show just across the street. Like, I don't know why the art of movement is the most forgotten about. The thing that we can all do with our own bodies somehow has no eyes on it. I want to create something so painful and interesting and incredibly moving that it has everyone's attention, you know? Like, fundamentally change them. Forever. Oh my god, you're gonna make me cry. <laughs> but, I mean, you'll show them and they'll show you. The power of what we do, music, dancing, it's like we can portray these abstract emotions without using any words. Like, we have the ability to release that raw, pure power. Exactly! Yes, you get it! We can reread a book or rewatch a film as many times as we'd like and extract the meaning out of it, like wringing out a sponge. But what we do, it has deeper meaning to it. We feel it like deep within ourselves. We can convey whatever emotion we like, like lifelong sadness or restlessness or 
whatever the fuck, you know? Sometimes I feel like we convey abstraction better than abstract art does. You know, like a painting. We can take that feeling and we can produce it into something that people can universally understand. You know, like, in a completely unpretentious way, we can give the ability to people for them to feel things through, like, a different medium. And for them to see the world through a different lens. I, I feel like we're all just still babies that got too tall, you know? When we're younger, we develop all these senses and as we get older it's like we become less receptive to what impresses us but then we develop a sixth sense disappointment but like every now and then we stumble upon those moments where our heart's racing or when your throat closes up like you're about to cry and you forget about all that disappointment like you forgot about yesterday's lunch we forget about our futility and in this place we feel this free-flowing vulnerability some people only need a tear down their cheek to feel that, but people like us, people who care, we feel like we're on the clouds. I mean, you could blow air into a kid's face and tell them it's the ocean's breeze, and they'd believe you in that moment. This, this brings us all together, this art, movement, singing, dancing, it brings the audience and the dreamers together as one, and that's when lightning strikes twice. That's the magic that exists. When two makers and dreamers come together, what do you think will happen? Okay, I have a song, you have a dance. I have a performance tomorrow, and you have... I have all the time in the world. Do you want to create something with me? Yes. Did you make this? Yeah. Do you want to share the spotlight with me? Yeah. Can you can you turn it up? It says as loud as it gets. to wake up and see. Okay, time to wake up. You still look familiar. Your turn.
Thank you everyone for coming here tonight. What you are about to see are some of the most talented young artists we have ever brought to this event. We truly have it all tonight, folks. Comedy, dance, literature, and music. Our first act we have here today is Remy Rufus. <laughs> Remy Rufus, everyone. You guys all seem like pretty nice people, and I'd like to consider myself one of you, but that might be stretching the truth just a little bit too far now, wouldn't it? I've done many bad things. Um, like one time when I was younger, I was a bad kid. I used to tell my friends I was gonna gouge them with an ax later that night or something. No reason in particular, I just wanted to see how they'd react. Most of them cried or puked or something, but one time one of them offered me a follow-up question. She said, imagine you're dead and naked and everyone you ever knew was watching as you were lowered into your grave. It was an intriguing premise, I must admit, but <laughs> she too was an intriguing person. She even wrote some of the best jokes you've ever heard from me. God, I just wanted to cut into her brain and like eat it whole. I'd scoop out her eyeballs and suck on them while drinking her blood. She would have really liked that, I think. Years later, though, I shot her. Um, it was a whole messy ordeal, but you know how that goes. Um, in fact, she's lying somewhere really close to here, um, unburied. She was a really good friend. I also used to poop my pants when I was little. <laughs> Down my leg and stuff, like, it even happened last month. <laughs> Embarrassing, am I right? I didn't make it to the toilet in time. <laughs> you guys are too kind. Uh, thank you for coming out, and remember, you live a life, and life will live. Our next act is a special one. I'd like to present to you a duo, a 50-50 song, dance from Quincy and Camille. Anyone ever will. 
It's a problem that you have And this problem's made you ill Listen up and I'll tell a story About an artist growing old We created something great Yeah, we did Hey, you and I did that Not her, okay? Don't forget that Come here, come here, come here. You guys were like really great. You know who I am? Because I want to write a piece about you. Oh my god. Yeah, that would be awesome. How do we get in contact with you? Um, yeah, I have my card and we can also email or I can give you my phone number too. Like, it's no big deal. It's whatever. It's cool. Appreciating the sun. It's all his waking hours. But is it really so? in front of their TV saying hey this is fun and they laugh at the artist saying he doesn't know how to have fun the best things in life are truly free singing birds and laughing bees You got me wrong, says he. The sun don't shine in your TV. Listen up and I'll tell a story about an artist growing old. Some would try for fame and glory. Others aren't so bold. Everyone and friends and family Saying, hey, get a job 